So, torque. Torque, 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 torque. I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of talking about torque, but it occurred to me that I never made a simple video talking about what torque is. And so I, I figured it's something I should go back and do in case somebody is coming here for the first time and seeing terms like torque and inductance and that type of thing thrown around and just I have no idea what they're talking about. Again, since there's a lot of confusion and misinformation online, I'm just gonna go back and hit on the basic points so that at least you have a reference if you need it. The big confusion is that the term torque is used for a couple different things and there are different types of torque. On this basic level, torque is just how much rotational force you can apply or how much rotational force you have to resist movement. Holding torque and dynamic torque. Another point of confusion is that in 3D printers, we like smooth movement and low noise. So we tend to use high microstep settings. And you'll see a lot of info flying around about microstepping losing torque and things like that. And the, the reason it's confusing is because that's both true and it's false at the same time. And the 3D printer stuff isn't all that complicated, but since it gets buried in a whole bunch of math that nobody wants to bother doing, it gets a little bit murky. I really wanted to do a super nerdy video where I laid out all the math and I solved it in front of your very eyes, you know, show your work. But I can't seem to find a way to do that and make it an interesting video. So I'm going to talk you through the math. And then I took all the equations that I use, a couple different versions, and I plunked them into a spreadsheet that I'm gonna use at the end to show you how these various parameters affect the end product. I thought maybe a practical example like that would make things a little bit more clear than just me talking numbers into a screen. Now the math isn't terribly complicated, but when we're talking about a stepper, we're talking about radians, we're talking about vector math, and then we're also talking about area under a curve, which is calculus. And we don't tend to wrap our brains around things like rotational speed as much as we do linear speed. Because as humans, we go from point A to point B, we don't deal a lot with things spinning around. Just to have it make any sense to you, it would either add another tier of computations or I would have to stop, do the conversions, and then come back to the video again. And even that is a little bit confusing. We tend to think in linear measurements. So I have to take radians degrees, convert it to revolutions per minute, and then convert it to linear. But if you're talking about a spindle that's attached to a 20 tooth pulley, your actual linear speed of your belt is going to be different, obviously, than if you're using like a 10 tooth pulley. So that's where I just left all that alone. But regardless, let's get on to the subject. Any microstepped motor is going to have less torque than any full step motor arrangement, but that's not true across the board. You see, the reason for that is that microstep torque is the vector sum of the phase currents. That's where that dumb math comes in. If you've gone through high school math, you know what a vector is. So just think of it that way. The second tier of problem is that's talking about holding torque. Now holding torque is what they rate steppers in. So anytime you see something like 84 inch ounce, that's talking about full rated holding torque. We want to worry about the torque while our motors are in motion. That's dynamic torque. Any motor in motion, regardless of full step, micro stepped, whatever, is going to have about 30 to 40% less torque than the rated holding torque. And that changes across the range in various conditions. So at low speeds, you're losing additional dynamic torque. This is because a lot of that energy that you would be transferring to torque is instead transferred into resonances in the motor itself and wasted. If you think of your amount of rated torque as a dollar, you wanna spend that entire dollar on spinning the motor, but because we're jumping roughly between positions, especially at low speed, and you have overshoot and settling back and things like that, you're taking 30 or 40 cents of that dollar and you're spending it on making the motor just vibrate in its mount, which doesn't help us at all. This is an area where you're gonna get a little bit more torque out of micro-stepping. And the reason for that is you're moving more smoothly between those positions so you're not gonna excite those resonances as much as if you're talking about full steps at low speeds. Now there's a break point to where that doesn't matter anymore. Typically it's going to be in the low single digits to mid single digits RPMs, but it varies from one motor to another depending on construction, mounting, how good your driver is. Once you push past that range though, the motion becomes a lot less jumpy because you have momentum going on and the motor starts benefiting less and less from that micro stepping as it starts turning faster. As a result, in that low to mid range, micro stepping has about 20% less torque unless your driver varies the waveform 
of the signal that's sent to drive the motor, in which case they can be about equal. So that's where things like a junky step stick versus a nicer step stick comes into play, because just by fact that they put any thought into the shape of the waveform means that you're not gonna be wasting that torque if you decide to stay in microsep. And anyway, all of those things are what's gonna help out in that mid band. Now, why bother microstepping at all in that range? Well, we want to keep our accuracy. So it helps to have those steps divided just for positional accuracy in our X and our Y directions. There is a point there that it doesn't matter anymore. Typically these motors are 5% accurate. Once you approach that 5% margin, anything above it is just icing on the cake. That's all just making your motors run quieter, again, because of the vibrations. But in terms of accuracy, about 10 times microstepping, 12 times microstepping, somewhere in that range, is about where you're gonna reach it with a 5% motor. It depends but that's around the range. That's why we kind of settled on 16 microsteps. Now, when we're talking about dynamic torque, they tend to show you a curve. And if you watched my um, silent step stick torque rating video, you'll know that I posted a lot of those curves. And what they do is at a particular operating point, they will turn the speed up on the motor, see what the torque is before it stalls, and then plot that out. Industry standard is to test each point three times, which I did in my video as well. That curve is called the pullout torque. It's the maximum torque that a motor can put out at a particular RPM. If you exceed that curve at any point in time, you're gonna miss steps. The flip side of that is called pull-in torque. That's the measure of instantaneous start and stop without skipping steps, which is dependent on the load and the friction. Again, if that's exceeded, you're going to skip steps. So let's talk about the relevant parameters. We already know that our stepper motors are just electromagnetic motors, and they have a stator and a rotor with coils of wire wrapped around armatures. It's these coils that your driver has to energize, and then they de-energize, and then energizes them again, and it happens very rapidly. But anytime you have a coil of wire, you have inductance. You can look up Faraday and Lenz's law if you want to see all about that nonsense. But basically, energy is stored in between the coils in the form of magnetic flux, which you charge up through current and then it discharges. But the higher the resistance that has to discharge through, the slower it'll discharge. Also, the higher the capacity, the slower it'll discharge. The speed at which you can charge and discharge is called time constant. And the simple equation is time is inductance divided by resistance. The only thing we can really do to swamp that inductance is to raise our operating voltage. That's why the lower inductance on your coil and the higher your operating voltage, the more torque you can get at increasing speeds out of your steppers. Now we'll look at a couple more terms. Back EMF relates to inductance in that the higher the inductance, the more back EMF, which is the voltage that is generated by the motor turning. Since the motor is just a generator in reverse, anytime there's movement, you're going to be having voltage spikes. And just like a generator, the higher the speed, the higher the frequency, the higher the voltage spikes. If this is your driver headroom, say 12 or 24 volts, the higher the spike, the more you're eating into your headroom, which means lower voltage available to drive your motor. And that's gonna drop your torque down. So again, lower inductance equals higher torque and increasing speeds. Let's move on to the spreadsheet and I'll show you how these things affect your printer. In the top section here, we can put in our stepper specs, our supply specs, and our printer specs, and it'll spit out a bunch of useful numbers. So this top section marked max shows what our maximum belt speed in millimeters per second is, and also our RPM. Now I use two different formulas to do this. One takes into account the back EMF from inductance and the back EMF from rotation and give you the high end of the likely range that you're gonna see. And then the other formula here is a more conservative estimate, primarily using the electrical specs of the stepper. The middle section is for my own use, and that just calculates a few things depending on the options that you enter at the top. So it'll tell you what your firmware steps are down here that you can enter in Marlin. It shows you what your RPM is going to be at your desired maximum speed. And then it tells you at your particular micro-stepping resolution and pulley size, what the highest belt speed you can achieve is while still having single stepping rate, that is anything under a 10K, and what the maximum speed you can reach before Marlin hits its brick wall limit, which is gonna be 40K. 
The bottom section is an estimate of your supply voltages. Now that's going to say what the optimal voltage should be if you want to hit the specs that you entered above. And that's the first equation here. The second two equations are based solely on the inductance motor of the stepper that you put in up here. I call those the generalization rules. The bottommost equation assumes full stepping, full torque, and 24 hour usage. So that's going to be much higher than the middle equation here, which is the same rule but derated for your current operating conditions and occasional use. These took into account everything from your voltage to voltage drop across the stepper to necessary headroom and eddy current heat up of the stepper itself. And it gives you a number down here that will limit you to 85 degrees Celsius without any active cooling for the steppers themselves. Mostly we're gonna be concerned about this first equation because that's going to give the most conservative results that are easiest for us to reach. And that's just gonna tell us what our bare minimum is. Of course, a lot of times we're not going to hit that, but that's okay because often we don't need maximum torque at our maximum speed. But if you absolutely do, or if you have a very heavy carriage you have to move around, then you should respect that voltage. I've pre-entered all of the numbers for Prusa's MK3 and the most recent motors that they're using for that. The Prusa's are what I would call a low to moderate speed printer. They get great results as long as you don't run them too fast. And they've tuned them to work optimally in that range. In January of this year, they switched to different stepper motors that have slightly higher inductance and slightly lower rated current. The reason being, they wanted a little bit more torque in the low to mid range, and they found that the dynamic drivers that they were running behaved best under the conditions that they were using around 750 milliamps, hence 75% times the rated current of one. And they upped the supply voltage to 24 for all the benefits that that gives you. I entered 125 millimeters a second as the desired maximum speed, because you look at the default Prusa settings, the highest print speed moves you're going to see are 120 millimeters a second, and the print settings are actually between 20 and 40, which is quite slow, with the inner perimeters being closer to 60. So if you're choosing your maximum speed here, it makes it a lot easier to spec parts that aren't overkill and hence are a little bit more affordable and makes more sense for your application. 125 is also the limit that we can reach with single stepping, which is good for stealth chop, which as you know, if you watched my silent step stick torque video, Stealth Chop doesn't like getting out of single even stepping mode. Once you get into double and quad stepping right here, things start to get a little bit messy. And we can also see that since they use GT2 belt with 20 tooth pulleys and 16 times micro stepping, plus the software interpolation, which doesn't actually affect the spindle speed, the RPM at our desired maximum speed is gonna be 188. And in this bottom section where it shows you the formula, you can see that I just arrived at that number by taking the maximum desired speed in millimeters per second, dividing it by the number of pulley teeth, multiplying that by two for GT2, and then multiplying that by 60 to get revolutions per minute. So using the I3 as a baseline, let's see what happens when we go ahead and change some of these parameters a little bit. Now if you take your back EMF from your inductance and your back EMF from your rotation, and you add them both together, you're going to get your minimum supply voltage to hit your absolute maximum speed at absolute maximum torque. Prusa chose the common voltage of 24, which is twice as good as their previous voltage of 12, and it gives you a lot more benefit. But we're still not gonna be able to reach our maximum torque since around 34.5 volts plus a couple volts for losses in the actual motors would be our optimal voltage for running at that speed. But again, we're just using our maximum speed for our non-print movements, so that's not absolutely crucial. And regardless, if we weren't worried about going over our 10K micro-stepping limit, we could still theoretically hit over 200 millimeters per second before we drop off to unusable torque ranges. Now let's see what would happen if we decided to change from 1.8 degree steppers to 0.9 degree steppers. We can see right here that our torque will start to drop off below our desired maximum printing speed, which is not good. We're also limiting ourselves to 62.5 millimeters a second if we want to stay in single skepping. So we would have to raise our supply voltage significantly if we wanted to get higher speeds at those resolutions. The same thing would happen if we went to a finer tooth or if we doubled our inductance. 
it's approximately the same effect because our back EMF from inductance goes up to 41.2. So again, Prusa picked a good range if their target was to stay within the single stepping 10K limit and not change the actual mechanics of their printing. But let's see we decided to switch to eight times micro stepping. Then we have a single stepping limit of 250 millimeters a second. So let's up our desired max speed to 250 and see what happens. All of a sudden, we're running our steppers at 375 RPM and we're demanding a much higher power supply. And as we can see, our torque is gonna to start to drop off before that. So one way to get our drop off over our desired speed is to raise the supply voltage so we can try 36 and we see that we easily make that range or we can switch to motors that have a lower inductance. So if we cut that in half to seven as opposed to 14, we're back in business. If our drivers and the settings that we use are happy playing with that inductance, that is. Now, the spreadsheet's not perfect. It needs to be tweaked a little bit and tested against real world results. But when that happens, maybe I'll post it up for my Patreon supporters or something like that. So thanks again. Hope that wasn't too nerdy. Bookmark this as a resource. And if you're into these types of videos, I'm gonna keep making them as long as people keep supporting me. So check my support links below, click subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, get out there and make something awesome.